Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Rich Reviews. My name's Richard and welcome back to our series on horology and today we're going to talk about the history behind the purchases of my watch collection. So I'm going to walk you through the purchases in my watch collection in the order that I purchased them. So first of all, we'll be looking at the 116503, which is the Rolex Daytona two-tone. So the two-tone Daytona, this particular one was a special order into Geneva because this has the black Tahitian mother of pearl dial. This actually has gold inlays. Now I'm not going to talk too much in detail about the actual timepieces because I'll be going through each one if I haven't already in order providing separate videos for each actual timepiece. But the history behind this timepiece was I had an 116503 some time ago before I purchased this watch with the white mother of pearl dial and uh, to put it directly I had to sell that during a, an unpleasant divorce that I went through. So I sold the 116503 with a white dial uh, to actually help pay off my ex-wife, the installments that, um, that I had to make. And so it was a, I didn't want to sell it, but it was a necessity. So I got a very good price for it as well. Um, and then I swore that I would, uh, once I got myself back on my feet, that I would actually purchase an 116503 again. And I looked at purchasing the white mother of pearl dial again, but I thought I'd make a change here and I'd actually research the black mother of pearl dial, but I'd never been able to see one with the, with the Tahitian dial. So I took a chance and purchased it and I'm really pleased that I did. In my opinion, it shows a lot more depth and it's a lot more richer look. And, and the, the difference between the black Tahitian mother of, pearl, mother of pearl dial is that the sub dials actually have ground gold in them. And the black mother of pearl dial um, is a very high fail rate. So I believe this just the spec option to have the black mother of pearl dial was over three thousand pounds alone. So it's quite an exceptional timepiece. Of course, you've got the solid 18 karat gold center links, polished center links down the middle of the strap as well. This is quite often my regular wearer, so I, I'm quite commonly wear this watch. Even though I have a lovely uh, rest of the watches in my collection are lovely. I tend to. Um, still wear this predominantly because I just love the beautiful dial. So moving on, so this is the Apollo 17 45th anniversary. This is obviously a Speedmaster. Um, the history behind this was I actually saw the gold version of this in London while I was consulting in London. It was too expensive. I thought I'd try and get the steel version. This model was um, as a special edition so there's only a few numbers that had been released. This is, oh, I can't see what the actual number is of this, um, but the, this is a low number limited edition and this is a uh, this is a beautiful timepiece and I thought I'd look at trying to get the steel version uh, because when I saw the gold version and when I did my research I noted that the gold the steel version has a lot of the actual gold accents so I thought I'd have a look to see if I could get the steel version even though it was released some time ago when I actually was looking for it and I was very lucky I found a website I won't I, I, again I think I've done some history on this already if I haven't I will do a separate video on this watch um, but the top and bottom of it is that I found a website that actually had one and the reason they had it in stock was because it had only just been put on the, on the website because it only just had it delivered late. So literally it had been put on the website and I happened to glance across the website at that time, I mean I'm quite tenacious in how I do things, but and uh, I got in touch with them and purchased it straight away. So I love this timepiece, this is one that will never be sold along with hopefully the Daytona, this will never be sold. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful timepiece. And commonly I wear this when I'm consulting on site because it belies its, its um, value. It's, uh, it's a lovely timepiece and it looks like an ordinary Omega when it isn't. Now the next purchase was uh, one that was a bit different here, which is the Breitling Unitime Sleek T. Now this, is a, this Unitime Sleek T is actually a world time. 
incredible piece of engineering. It's quite a bulky watch as well, but I've got quite big wrists, so it wears quite well. Most people watching this video will know what a world time watch is, um, but it, in effect, it allows you to see all the different times in all the different countries of the world, and it offsets for summertime and such likes as well. So it, it gives you alternate slots on the actual different subsets of the dial for the different uh, zones that you are in the world, the different subparts of zones you are in the world, taking into account different different sub time zones. So for example, you know, Greenwich Mean Time plus one hour, say for example, um, when you're in British summertime, etc. So yes, yeah, it's quite cool. Um, it's uh, also got a date function on there as well. And this is provisioned, the Sleep Tea is provisioned in a white dial and a black dial, and I went for the white dial. And actually purchased this from from uh, Watchfinder. I think I purchased this from Watchfinder UK and I got a very good deal on it. You can pick these up at a steal. Um, and one of the unique characteristics of this timepiece is that the actual bezel is titanium. So it's very tough material. It's actually carbide titanium. So you'll be very um, hard pushed to scratch that and mark that and obviously it helps protect the crystal. So yeah, beautiful timepiece. Albite Brightlings don't hold their value, but I knew that when I purchased it, but I just really wanted this. It's a lovely, lovely timepiece, lovely thick strap. I don't wear this very often. I should wear this a lot more than I do. So that's the Brightling Unisex Sleep Tea. So the next timepiece I'm going to show you is the Brightling 806 1959 reissue. Now I've talked about this extensively before. I've actually done a separate, separate video on this before. I've got the JB Champion New Old Stock Mesh Strap. Um, which actually was initially um, worn at the same period on a, on a Cosmonaut Breitling. So I purchased that because I like that in association with a watch, but it was originally delivered on a leather strap and this one was purchased on a leather strap, but the original 1959 was on a leather strap as well. And yeah, what more do you need to say when you've got such a beautiful dial as that? And this is the, this is the classic version of, the, of a Navi timer. And I didn't want one of the new modern Navi timers. I wanted one of the classic versions um, that being be not too bulky. And uh, as I said in the video that I shot for this timepiece, the actual rice bezel, which is movable, of course, because it's a, it's a slide rule in effect on the outside of the watch. But that is actually has exactly the same amount of beads of, of rice beads in it. Um, is the original 1959 as well so it's very accurate and it's a very accurate remake it's a beautiful timepiece i wear this a lot as well so i'd say this is my the the timepiece that i wear the second most regular in association with my daytona 116503 but yeah so that's the brightling 806 1959 navi timer reissue so the next timepiece i'm going to show you is the is the zenith the zenith timeless it's actually called the timeless zenith actually but it has, it was made in association with Timeless and Zenith, and it has the El Primero movement in it. And this is the, this is the only other dress watch I've got other than a special watch, which I'll, I'll deal with at the end, which I'll talk you through at the end. And this has got a beautiful champagne dial on it and blue hands, very blue, blue engineered hands. Very rarely wear this timepiece which is a shame really. I should wear this timepiece a lot more than I do, but uh, it's, a, it's a little bit small, and um, I may actually sell this one on at some point, but it's hardly been used. It actually has a clear case back on it as well. So if you see on the back, you can see the actual movement is very well decorated through the actual case back. The next timepiece that I'm gonna talk you through is actually a Timex. Now this is the, this is a Timex um, that was really uh, built in association with a BNR, so it was made to copy the Rolex BNR. But it's just a fun piece, really. I think it only cost me a couple of hundred pounds. Um, it's got the day date on it. It's uh, it's a, it's a it is a mechanical movement, but it's just a bit of fun. And my my son has the Q Timex, so I bought it so that we could uh, both wear Timexes at some point. Um, and uh, it's quite well engineered for what it is, really. Quite a thick timepiece. It, it actually rests quite proud on the wrist. So not a watch I wear very often, as you can as you can imagine, wearing a Timex when I've got the other timepieces in the collection. Um, but it's a, it's a nice little fun watch. Uh, the only negative thing about it is that the strap catches your hairs, but it is what it is. You know, it's not a. It doesn't cost thousands of pounds. It's a nice little little Timex. There's nothing wrong with wearing a nice little Timex. So now we come on to the final timepiece that I purchased in my collection, but not the final timepiece in my collection. 
and this is the 126710 BLRO GMT2 Rolex and this has got the, the blue and red dial and this model is commonly known as the Pepsi. I've only, this is the last purchase that, I, that I've made in, for my watch collection and this was purchased in January of this year. And I, this was, uh, I was waiting two years with my authorised dealer for this watch. My authorised dealer came through again and it's a beautiful timepiece. We've got a little bit of the remaining sun left so hopefully it is actually coming through there. The actual colours on the Cerachrome bezel. I have um, recorded and provided a video on my, on my channel for this actual timepiece so if you want to check out all the other videos there's an actual specific playlist for watches on my channel so you'll be able to see all the different videos that I have actually already put together for my timepieces and if there isn't a, a video there for one of my timepieces then there will be video forthcoming in the future. So again that's the 126710 GMT2 Rolex BLRO commonly known as the Pepsi. One of the most sought after timepieces at the moment. Now the last timepiece we're going to come to is the most valuable in my collection. Now it's not the most valuable with respect to financial value but it's the most valuable with regards to heritage. This was owned by my grandfather and it was passed down to me by my father when my father passed away and it's an Eterna and this is a solid gold Eterna. Value wise it's worth about two and a half, three thousand pounds. It's solid gold, but that doesn't matter to me. It does actually function as well, and I put the strap on it because it didn't have a strap, um, and it functions fine. It keeps good time as well. It's got a slight crack in the crystal. It's not crystal. It's a hesalite crystal, so it's not a sapphire crystal. It's hesalite crystal, but uh, I, I'm not going to get that repaired because it shows it has value to it in its history. Um, and even though the dial is, is aged, it's got champagne dial on it, although probably that dial was white to begin with, it's aged because of its history. And you know, when you have these types of watches, you should never sell them. When these watches and when these timepieces are passed down to you through your family heritage, you should now never sell them, you should always keep them. And this will be passed down to, to my son. As you can see from the back, it's got a, a gold case back. The whole watch is, the whole case of the watch is solid gold. Now, one of the one of the timepieces that I forgot to mention that was actually wearing on my wrist, and that is the Speedmaster 50th anniversary. This is the anniversary of the 50th Speedmaster creation, and this is a, a limited timepiece as well. So, if you want to see details on this timepiece, then I've just recently created a video for this and put it into my watch playlist, into my watches playlist on the channel. So, please check below. Uh, check out the watches playlist and you'll be able to see the video for this timepiece which provides a lot of detail on this on this on this watch and on all my other watches that I've created videos for. So there you have my watch collection. It's uh, still growing and you know there'll be maybe one or two of those timepieces that I will sell at some point. Definitely the timeless then if I will sell that if there's any value in it I will sell that at some point going forward. Um, Maybe the Breitling I'll sell at some point going forward as well. But the watches that I really want to keep are the 806, the um, the Daytona, and probably keep the Timex as well. There's no real value in selling that. And the BLRO, I'd really like to keep the BLRO as well. So you may have noticed that we're doing this history on my watch collection on the 458 Spider. So we're hoping to get the 458 out of the garage soon. The work is scheduled to be done on the garage door um, within the next sort of four to six weeks. Um, once that work is done, once the new garage door is put on, we're putting a sectional door, sectional door on, then the car will be coming out of the garage, taxing it, and it will be on the road, and hopefully we'll have some car shows to go to. We've got a couple of car shows booked already, but there'll be plenty of more car shows that we'll be, that we'll be taking a car to, and we'll be providing a, little, a lot of content on those car shows coming forward. So a lot of supercar content coming forward as well, as well as uh, doing some uh, more videos on, my, on the remaining washes in my watch collection. And so the actual channel will, will, will move forward in that, in that way in horology and supercars slash sports cars as well. Probably hit some normal cars as well, but it, hopefully we can focus on supercars and sports cars. So thanks a lot for watching the video, guys. If you, if you like the video, then please click that like button and please share the channel and please share the videos to your friends. Uh, we're really trying to grow the channel at the moment. We're looking to increase to a minimum of a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. And uh, we're really looking to move the channel forward. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.